Let us pray. Lord, thank you that we can join together on this Palm Sunday. Thank you for your faithful love and your goodness. Teach us and encourage us from your word today. And may you be honored in all in all that we say and do. Amen. Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday is a day of ambiguity. And I'm saying this because today's reading takes us to both the joys and the pain. And so you wonder where to focus your thought. Now, there are many ways of approaching the story. We can focus on the palms and celebrate the day of victory, filled with hosannas and rejoicing. We could focus on the suffering. We could look at Pilate and the religious leaders, or we could look at the disciples who ran away. But these are all secondary. The central question to ask is this, who is the man going through this horrific experience? Who is this man of sorrows condemned by the powers that be and abandoned by his followers? And so for this reason, I want to focus this morning on this morning's appointed psalm, Psalm 31. Now, Psalm 31 shows up at an incredibly significant place in the story of Jesus. In fact, Psalm 31 can be seen as a prophecy of all that Jesus would experience during the entire week of Holy Week. Verses 9 to 15 of Psalm 31 gives us a brief description of the awful events of Monday, Thursday as heard in great detail from the Passion of Christ, according to St. Luke. Now, the appropriateness of Psalm 31 for Palm Sunday becomes even more obvious because Jesus took verse 5 on his lips as he breathed his last on the cross. Into your hands I commit my spirit. No wonder all three years of the lectionary cycle we read from Psalm 31, on Palm or Passion Sunday. But verse 13 is really what connects Psalm 31 and the experience of Jesus during this fateful week. Now verses 14 and 15 of Psalm 31 says, For I hear the whispering of many. Terror is on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take away my life. Now, this is a perfect prediction of what happened to Jesus on Palm Sunday and the days following. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem precedes tragedy and violence. Now, just like the psalmist, Jesus knows the dark night of the soul. Now, Marilyn Brown Oden in a book, Wilderness Wandering, says, that the dark night of the soul feels like stepping into the movie, the never-ending story, where nothing is shattering everything, and all that is left is emptiness and a sense of loneliness and despair. But despite the fact that Jesus had such a big crowd around him, nobody was really with him. He was really on his own. As the Hosannas rose from the lips of the crowds out in the streets of Jerusalem, whispers of conspiracy fills the rooms where the religious leaders gather together to plot Jesus' death. And we read of their plotting in Luke chapter 19, verse 39, when the crowd shouted Hosanna, the Pharisees were displeased, and so they ordered Jesus to tell the disciples to stop. And then we again hear in verse 47 how the chief priest plotted to kill Jesus while he was teaching in the temple. There was terror on every side. Jesus understood this terrible time all too well. He struggled with that time just as David did in Psalm 31 and as we do in times of terrible disasters. The agonized prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, complete with sweat drips like, uh, drip like drops of blood, revealed the depth of Jesus' terror of what awaited him. 
and to intensify this terror, not only were his enemies against him, but his friends deserted him. When they were in the garden, they flee into the darkness. His closest friend Peter denied ever knowing him. Being rejected by your closest friends when things get tough is perhaps more painful than any beating. His heavenly Father too would forsake him. Jesus cried out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But in the end he was able to cry out with his breath, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And so one wonders how Jesus could move from feeling so God-forsaken to feeling so confident that he once again calls God his Father. How could he entrust himself again into his Father's hands? Who can we move from terror to trust when terror and fear is on every side? Now, just like the psalmist in verse 16, Jesus shows us how to trust God, even though he had moments of despair. And this leads to the crux, crux of Psalm 31, which was a crux for Jesus and is for all of us. My times are in your hands. And I can't help to think of the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and how it captures the times of our lives. The writer says there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time for both birth and death, for planting and uprooting, for killing and healing, for war and peace. There is an appointment time for everything. Even if we struggle to believe that all of our times are appointments made by God, we can rest secure in the words of Jesus that all our times are in his hands. It may feel as though we have fallen into the rough hands of evil people, but we are in the gentle hands of God. And therefore we cannot only commit our lives into his hands at the end of life, but we can also, like Jesus and the psalmist, trust God completely in all the times of life. I hope it consoles you to know that when we are afraid or sad or confused or in pain, that the maker and sustainer of life totally understands how you feel. Jesus trusted our Heavenly Father with his anguish, his pain and his fear. He committed himself to God and he also had to remember that his times were in the hands of a good father. Now maybe you could say it was easy because Jesus knew what was coming. We know that three days after he prayed this, Jesus broke the power of sin and death and he came back to life. But even though Jesus knew what was coming, it's interesting that knowing a good future was coming didn't remove the reality of Jesus' pain in the moment. It was all still so hard to bear that he wanted to escape it. But he chose to trust his good father and he obediently committed every part of himself into the hands of God, even as his body was dying. So just like Jesus had to endure the pain before he could see the other side, sometimes we too have to do the same, but we don't face it alone. And so I want you to remember today on this Palm Sunday that Jesus is alive and he knows how you feel. He has gone through the worst of it himself, and he understands. So when we call out to the Lord in the midst of suffering, we entrust ourselves to a compassionate and suffering Savior. He hears you, he knows you, and he loves you. And when we meet him in this honest place and on this Palm Sunday, we are able to sing the end of the song, 
of Psalm 31. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you that hope in the Lord. Amen.